Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to weave in your ends and how to graph the two edges of the cow together so it actually forms a cow. So it's been grafted here and it shows you have this in continuous loop. So you want to weave in the ends first as it makes it easier when grafting the edges together. And so you are going to grab a pair of scissors and then snip the white yarn, leaving a decent amount of yarn to be able to weave in with a tail. So just snip. And that's about the length you're going to need to be able to weave in the ends comfortably. And you will also need a wool needle. So this is the bottom where you started. So the provisional cast on has been undone and the stitches have been popped back on another pair of needles. So weaving ends can be a little bit tricky with having a ferrule pattern on the back but if you just look for the normal stitches like you would do when you're weaving in ends normally and you can see there's a little bump here the bump so the yarn will go up through this loop through that loop and back down so I will show you and sometimes it helps to sort of move the floats around with your thumb just to see where the stitches and this here is really showing it quite easily how to see so this so here and up is a little loop. So you technically when you're weaving in your ends, you're just trying to mimic the stitch. So you go into the next pill bump. Go up and through the joining stitch. So you don't want to be going underneath catching this float. So it's better if you can miss this little blue float here. And actually go in to where the stitch is. So the float is getting behind the stitch the yarn for the weaving in. Then back down. And through. So you can see here how we've gone up through the blue around through the other blue and then back down to the starting stitch. So you're just making a loop that is continuously sort of weaving through just like when you're knitting so then you go into the next one so you're wanting to look for the line see how this little bump here is sort of on the same row not going down so how this one is dipping down you want to stay across the same line when you're working the stitches so you're actually picking up the same and then through up here and yet again you're working along the same line even for the blue. And of course it does not have to be blue and blue. It just depends on the colours where you're at. And then back down into the where you came up. Over to the next bottom one. Back up. through the stitch and back down so so far I've done the three stitches I normally like to do about the amount to cover across four or five it just depends and you want to be trying to keep it at the same tension and as you can see it's not showing through so if it's done properly it is completely invisible on the right side of the work so see how we've come down this white one to go across to the next one across it actually is blue so it's not always going to be white you're just looking for that the bumps are on the same line and once the tail has been woven in across about five stitches you can just finish and go into weaving on on the next end a lot of the time I will not snip the ends when blocking but because this is going to be completely encased I will snip it then to weave in the starting blue thread and then you go on to weave in this end that was at the end of the project. So all ends have been woven in except the strand that is connected to the working yarn and this strand is going to be used for grafting the stitches together. So for the grafting you use Kitchener stitch and Kitchener stitch is often used to close toes. So this method, a good rule that I've worked out over the years is that with doing Kitchener stitch you actually have to estimate how much yarn you're going to need for the grafting. I found on average if you wrap the working yarn that you're going to be using for the grafting around the project three times, not pulling it tight, just loosely, not 
changing the shape without being too loose and sagging around the project that certainly is enough yarn to use for the grafting and then a little bit of fat so now you snip the yarn and you no longer need any more yarn for the project. So now this is probably the trickiest part of the whole pattern of Flickers of Scardi is just working with all the needles together and grafting it. It's not so hard to do, it's just a little bit fiddly. So you're going to be having all four of the needles together like this in a bit of a needle yarn sandwich and you'll be going to want to make sure that it is folded lengthwise in half and then for the grafting you are going to want to have these two middle needles which is sort of like the inside of the cow pushed down inside this yarn a little bit slightly and then the two outer needles together so you want to have all your stitches pushed up on your needles and it does help if you've had your stitches divided evenly across the two needles so if you're working with 50 stitches you're going to have the um, 25 on one needle, 25 on the other, and then 25 on this needle, and then 25 on the other again. So holding them together, pushing the two middle needles inside slightly. So you're going to be wanting one of the starting and one of the ending needles to be together. And then you want to make sure you're starting with the needles of the outside that is connected to the yarn. So as you can see this is the back one and it's connected to the yarn that you'll be using. So these two are in and it's kind of a bit like an old fashioned bag. You're pinching it together with the two needles inside the work pushed down. So you use Kitchener Stitch. And to do Kitchener Stitch it is the same no matter what project you're working on. So to start you've got to do a little setup. So for the needle closest to you, you go in purlwise in the first stitch, pull the yarn all the way through, and then for the one at the back, you go in knitwise. So that's just a little setup to start it going in directionally correct. So from now on for the rest of the Kitchener, you go in for the front needle, you go in knitwise, and slip that stitch off. pulling the yarn all the way through, then go into the second stitch on the front needle in purlwise. Pull the yarn all the way through. So then you go to the back needle, you go in purlwise and slip that stitch off and then go in knitwise into the back. So that is pretty much all Kitchener Stitch is. So for the first needle you go in the front going in from left to right like you do when you're putting your needle in to do a knit stitch, slip the stitch off the needle and then go in purlwise into the second stitch. So that's where you're coming in from the right to the left, so coming in from behind coming into the front. Then for the back, it's going in purlwise again, so from the back going in towards the front, so right into left. And you drop off that stitch, and then you go knitwise, so from the front to the back, or left to right. So with Kitchener, technically each of the stitches are being worked twice before they're slipped off. So then for the rest you just go in knitwise, slip off, purlwise, pull all the way through, pull all the way through making sure you don't slip off the second stitch. Then you go to the back needle, you go in purlwise on the first stitch, slipping it off and then in knitwise on the second stitch. I do a little bit closer, so in knitwise, slip stitch off, pull all the way through, and then in purlwise. 
not slipping the stitch off. And then you go to the back needle and purlwise slip it off and then in knitwise, not slipping it off. And then you can see your stitches are starting to be grafted together. So that is all you do the whole way across. So I've gone ahead to the last two stitches on these first two needles. And as you can see we're doing Kitchener stitch. It gives a lovely nice stitch that imitates a knit stitch. So you can hardly tell that this line here is actually being grafted. So the key to get this to look like the same tension as you have been knitting is that is when pulling the yarn through the stitches on the needles that you don't do it too tight or too loosely and you just get a feel of it as you're going. So the next part you're now going to be working these inside middle needles. So you're going to want to pull these needles out and get the stitches to come onto these two front ones that you have already been working with. So a lot of the time it helps to actually turn your work inside out because you will now be working on this edge. So then you've got them back onto these two front needles pointing towards you. So in doing it you need to have the needles pointing sort of to the right. And then there is nothing on these needles now. And then you can just continue to do Kitchener stitch along this side. So I've gone ahead and now the last two stitches are left on the needle. And you just continue to do them as you have been doing the Kitchener. Just working it in. You go in knitwise for the needle closest to you. Flip it off. And then in purlwise for the needle at the back. And then you are finished with your circulating needles. And you just pull through. And just give it a little bit of a tug round. And now all your stitches have been grafted together. And you are left with a completely enclosed little tube. So you do need to weave in this little tail. And because you cannot do it from the wrong side. You have to do it then from the right side. So you want to position it so you're going to have an area where there's lots of the dark colour because that is what you're going to be working into. But before that you just want to do a little whipping of catching in it so just to help enclose this little bit here as that still is a slight gap because the all the weaving has not been caught together. So you just want to grab a stitch from down here and then a stitch from up here. So thinking one from the start and one from the ending and just pull it through and then just go down and under there's under a little knit stitch and pull through so that's just helping to encase that so to weave in the tail you're going to be following the lines of the knit stitches so make sure you're only going to be doing it on the front piece you don't want to be catching it into the back bit over here. Okay, so you're going to want to follow, as you can see, a knit stitch has got little V's, so that's what we're going to follow. So we're going to go down to the stitch below, pull it through, and then go up like the V, go behind the top stitch above, pull through, then go down to the stitch. We're mimicking this middle stitch, so we're going to go down to the second stitch below. So then you've done one stitch that mimics it and you cannot tell. So then you go to over to the next stitch here, because we're going to be wanting to imitate this stitch just here. Let's go down under, wrap it around, go up to the stitch above. So you're wanting to go behind the two legs of the stitch above. Pull through. Then go down to the stitch below, and you're wanting to go down like that, and then in and under. Then you go over to the next stitch, the one below, follow the line up to the stitch above, go through the two legs of the stitch above. Follow the line of the stitch down and into the stitch below. Go through one of the legs and pull through. 
So you want to do that for a couple more stitches. Generally you're only going to have two more so that's as far as I will be going till the end of this repeat. So I've woven in and as you can see you cannot tell at all where these little woven in stitches are. It has been completely invisibly woven in. So you are going to want to pull this little strand here of the tail and snip it fairly close to the work and with pulling it you are tensioning this yarn so that it will pop back in after you have snipped it. So I'll snip, see, relatively close and give it a little smush and then the tail has completely disappeared and then you are left with a completely seamless tube and you cannot tell that it has been grafted together and none of the insides of the floats have been exposed. So if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and make sure to push subscribe to be kept up to date with all future videos on this channel. Okay, bye!